Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for being here tonight uh, for our fourth and final community coalition meeting for the Riverfront Specific Plan. Appreciate you all coming out on a holiday week. Um, for those of you in the room or online that don't know me, my name is Jeremy Pagan. I'm the Director of Development Services for the City of Reading. Um, we also have with us some other planning staff, Miss Lily Toy and Jennifer Gannon here. City Manager Tippin over there in the corner. Also have a Planning Commissioner. Good to have Planning Commissioner Hatch with us. Um, I think I covered my bases on the city, hopefully. Um, so uh, at any rate, welcome tonight. We're gonna be doing our fourth and final session of um, revisiting the, the visions and guiding principles. We'll be talking through some changes to those and getting more feedback. And then at the end of the presentation, uh, Dan's gonna be providing sort of a next steps in terms of uh, what you can expect after this. Uh, coalition meeting moving on to uh, city council come January timeframe. And so with that, that's all I have to kick off the meeting. I'm going to pass it off to Daniel. And once again, thanks for being here. Very good. Thank you, Jeremy. Again, I'm Daniel Isofano, principal with MIG. I'm here with my colleagues, Christine Thompson and Dan Amsten. And thank you for the consistent participation here in our coalition process. We're excited to be at this point and to uh, ultimately be launching the more technical aspects of the specific plan uh, after today's meeting. Uh, meanwhile, we have been working behind the scenes and getting various documents lined up. Environmental studies have already commenced. Economic studies are starting uh, in earnest and all the other technical areas uh, that'll be highlighted by Dan later on are also uh, beginning work as well. So it's good, we got a, almost a full coalition group here this evening. Uh, so we wanted to cover, as Jeremy said, just a few uh, updates, but mostly to focus on the emerging vision elements and guiding principles. Uh, we will have public comments once again, uh, and we will talk in a little more detail about the next steps uh, that lie ahead. Uh, project updates. So once again, we've used this chart a few times to highlight the work that we're doing, as you see lined up there, major reports and analyses progressing over the lifetime of the progress of this process, community coalition meetings, uh, and the community discussions and events will be starting up again in earnest following on our successful community open houses that took place at the very beginning of our efforts uh, at the Civic Auditorium. But we'll be having a lot of outreach, a lot of media attention uh, to highlight these events as we move forward. And then the city commission and council review sessions are also outlined here. No dates have been set for those. Uh, there's at least one city council meeting in January that we have on the calendar, which is January 16th. And we'll say a little bit more about that meeting, but otherwise uh, meetings have not been formally scheduled beyond that one. So, you know, this is our group, <laughs> Community Coalition, and uh, we are very uh, serious about taking notes, revising our document, the vision elements and principles along the way, and we've done our best to try to find the middle ground as we talk to all of you here in the coalition meetings discussion, and we're doing our best to make sure that the document ultimately reflects the broad general direction uh, for the process ahead. We like to remind you that this is not a policy document here. This is a guiding principles document. Uh, the actual policies of the specific plan will be uh, develop, proposed, and reviewed by the community at large, as well as the Planning Commission, City Council. So we're a long way from that still. This is what we thought the general direction that the community would like to see us go with the aid of the community coalition members, all of you here this evening. Uh, but uh, just bear in mind that these uh, planning principles will be the basis for the writing of future policies and specific programs or projects that might, uh, or, or initiatives that might be undertaken by the city of Reading as we uh, go on and implement the specific plan. Just for, uh, again, uh, information for all of you, we have the website that's been up and running. Uh, down there at the bottom corner is a box to share ideas and people have already been submitting their ideas. I think we have several dozen comments in there already. So encourage your friends and neighbors to use the website as a communication vehicle 
Uh, but it's a good set of items. That's just an example. They are all listed there in uh, reverse chrono uh, chronological order. And you can go on there and view what the people are saying out there that have submitted comments. And we're gonna keep this up and running through the life of the project. So it's a good way for us to interact and to make sure we're hearing the broader community sentiments as we move through the planning process. So getting right into the uh, emerging vision elements as we've been calling it, you have a copy of the latest iteration of that. Uh, we'd like to run through this again with you and then uh, have a chance to go around the horn just to make sure we've covered all the bases with each of the coalition members here present. And then uh, we'll have public comments again and a uh, few things at the end about the specific planning process as we move forward. And Jeremy, yes? Use this as just a quick reminder regarding public comment. So if you uh, are listening or at any time tonight have a public comment, we have the blue comment cards in the back. Come bring those up to myself or to Jennifer and we'll get you in the queue for the end of the meeting. Right, and we'll take them in the order they are submitted. Great. And uh, we are allowing three minutes as is typical here in the city of Reading for each uh, speaker. Okay, so uh, you should have a copy of the latest iteration of the vision and guiding principles document. And so as we move through this, uh, we'll stop after each one again and get your additional refinements. Hopefully at this point, uh, it should look pretty familiar. <laughs> we have made a few changes based on the last meeting discussion and also thinking about how it all ties together as a complete document. So definitely uh, you'll see some improvements there. So starting with vision element A, a healthy and resilient natural environment. Uh, we've set forward this series of principles. I'll just, again, read quickly through them, especially for the benefit of people who might be watching our meeting online. We have the camera set up, and we again ask you to use the microphones in front of you to make sure people online can hear uh, the discussion of the coalition members. So the first one here under healthy and resilient natural environment, A1 is about celebrating the immense natural beauty of the Sacramento River and Redder, Redding Riverfront area. Uh, we made a slight modification here to A2 to protect and identify opportunities to restore sensitive natural communities that support biodiversity to ensure the long-term health of the Sacramento River ecosystem. A3 is to create opportunities for native fish, animals, and birds to thrive throughout their entire life cycles. A4 is to require development and activities near the Sacramento River and or critical habitat areas to be compatible, complementary, and having low or no impact. So there are ways to do that. Environmental design, ecological design are certainly the best practices that we have out there. We have a lot of examples that we'll be able to bring forward that have been done elsewhere around the state, as well as ideas for what can be done specifically here in the riverfront area. And A5, to mitigate noise and light impacts on sensitive natural communities. And then finally, A6, to identify opportunities to create more public open space to support the rewilding of the riverfront area. So I'll just pause there and see again if there's any further adjustments or ideas you wanna make here. Dan will be taking notes along the way as we uh, listen to your comments. Josh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, first off, uh, just really quick, I appreciate everything that's being done here. All of the coalition members, thank you. Uh, city staff members, you and your organization. I think this has been a really interesting process. Thank so you. I just want to say that. Now. Thank you. Appreciate that. One thing that I've done, I've looked through a lot of these public comments. This is really just a comment, not anything to add to this. Okay, but sure. For instance, the first comment on that we got today was regarding the riverfront. It said, leave it to hell alone. And, <laughs> we've read that comment yeah, and we've heard well, that before. <laughs> I, I just want to say, I think this does a really good job saying basically not leave it to hell alone, but be careful with it and respect it. And so I'm really happy with this particular element and how it exists because I think that it takes into account really all of that type of concern. So good job. Right. To oh, all of us. Thank you. Thank all right. You. Appreciate that. Are there any further edits or changes that you would suggest on this item here? 
Okay, should look pretty familiar by now. So uh, I'm glad that we're getting there. We're moving closer to a uh, final document. All right, uh, let's see, Dan, could you get rid of that little pop-up note there? I think you have to just hit the X. Okay, there we go. All right, the second vision element, element B is respecting the indigenous community, past, present, and future. And again, we are striving to make additional outreach and holding listening sessions with the tribes in the region. So just once again, be assured that we have great uh, efforts being launched to make that happen in the course of this early phase of the process. Here we again identified a series of principles, B1, to honor the deep indigenous cultural connections to the Reading Riverfront area, to engage the indigenous community, include them, in land use, habitat protection, recreation, and cultural landscapes discussions and decisions, to protect indigenous sacred sites and cultural resources, to maintain indigenous connections and access to land, river, and animals, to explore partners, uh, uh, opportunities and partnerships for creating indigenous owned and operated cultural centers and spaces. So any comments on this section here? We are uh, again working with our sub consultant Tawa who have a lot of experience in working with uh, indigenous uh, communities throughout the United States and our own native nations building studio at MIG is also involved heavily in that effort. So we actually have a member of our firm who has a family connection with some of the, uh, with the tribe out here in, uh, in the Reading area. So that also is helpful in terms of making uh, outreach uh, and connections there. Any possible edits? Again, Josh, okay. So I brought up uh, partnerships last time. I appreciate this. I, I... Yeah, I think maybe it's good enough as it is, but I was also thinking more along the lines that partnerships with the indigenous indigenous um, communities. communities. So I, maybe it, that pro language is broad enough. Maybe it's not, but that would be the only kind of okay. I would have. We'll make sure that uh, that point is clarified there in the text. So again, if you want to make a note there, Dan, that's great. Okay. All right, we're making progress here. <laughs> so vision element C, economically viable and thriving arts, cultural and entertainment venues. So we've worked hard on this section. Uh, there's the civic auditorium. I think it is a good starting point for this section. So C1 is to allow for a range of activities, events and programs through multifaceted, flexible facilities. So Reading remains the Center for Arts, Culture, and Entertainment for the region. And it's interesting because we had a whole discussion with city staff about this one, how Reading truly is a cultural entertainment arts center. Uh, it is uh, certainly uh, something we can build on as we think about the future of the riverfront area. So all the, those words are very intentional there. C2, to ensure that new venues and destinations are scaled and program to address local and visitor desires while also being economically viable. We know that's not only a concern of the city council, but of the whole business community. We wanna make sure that whatever is done there, and especially if it's on city owned land, that it remains economically viable for now and long into the future. C3 is to make sure that the new venues and destinations are designed in such a way that they are efficient to maintain and operate, supporting their long-term financial success. And I would say that's something all of our uh, cities and counties, all municipal corporations are having to make sure that we can not just create a dream and a vision for the future, but the ability is, uh, we have the ability to maintain and ensure their long-term success. C4 is to support the viability and success of the arts, cultural, and entertainment events and venues in the area, that's all of those things, that are a key part of the unique history and identity of Reading. And so we thought that it'd be better to be very inclusive here in the statement. We're looking at, of course, the rodeo, we're looking at the public auditorium, the civic auditorium, 
uh, Turtle Bay uh, and all the different elements that make up the unique character, cultural history of the riverfront. And C5 to work with cultural district partners to enhance public art, cultural and entertainment elements so that the riverfront is a highlight of the designated Reading Cultural District. So again, we hope hopefully captured some of the ideas and intent that came up uh, from our session last time. Any comments on, on this section? Yes, Cameron? You got the green light there? Okay. So yeah, and it's it, as my role here was just kind of curious in the our last iteration that we had at the previous meeting, we had three bullet points versus the five. One of them was of the three was specifically to support uh, the viability and success of the Reading Rodeo as a key part of the unique history and identity of Reading. Right. I was actually going to ask you tonight if we might be able to specify Reading Rodeo grounds rather than that just Reading Rodeo. But I see, although there wasn't any objection from the coalition, we've completely removed Reading Rodeo out of that entirely. And it, where we've talked about venues as well, there was a mention of, of new venues once in the previous, mm -hmm. although this iteration, including a rodeo arena, has new, uh, where'd it go, new venues twice and flexible reprogrammable indoor venue couple of different, well, multiple different uh, mm -hmm. variations. That's kind of a big change of policy difference than what we've kind of been going on. Yeah. So we looked at this and decided that it might be more inclusive to word things this way because we didn't mention the Civic Auditorium. We didn't mention Turtle Bay. We didn't mention the boat ramp, for example. And just to give you some ideas of what our team has already been discussing, at least within uh, the consulting team and city staff. I mean, these are just the beginning, the tip of the iceberg of what we're going to be exploring in the technical work that lies ahead. So this is Northern Michigan University. It's a flexible, reprogrammable indoor venue. We can see the type of architecture. It has a fairly light touch. It's designed to be uh, less impact in terms of the surrounding environment. And another example that we found in Mulvaney, Kansas, is this combination of facility that is both, it, it's a rodeo, it is a, uh, uh, a uh, wrestling match center, and it's a concert venue. It's the exact same space in all three pictures. And so we just want people to be open to the possibilities here that we can have everything that's on the riverfront now and in a format or in a structure or in a, a format that actually could make it lighter touch on the environment and still accommodate the uses we have, including the rodeo and the possible concert venues and some of the things you see here. And so that's just one example. We're not saying this is the answer. We're just trying to have a discussion with the community, all of you, that might open minds up to the possibilities. Because by sharing these facilities, we can have a modern, up-to-date facility, the latest technology, and in terms of the programming, you have more event stays, it's going to make the venue more economically viable. So that's something that I know the rodeo is very interested in, and uh, I certainly appreciate that we talked about the rodeo being here in this space, but we want to keep an open mind for these sort of possibilities. So that was the thinking behind it. Michelle? I just want to add to Cameron's comments because it is kind of jarring to me that it's completely not mentioned when it is I'm under public comment, the rodeo ground is very, appears to be very important to our community. So I want, just want to suggest that under item C4, Perhaps we could say support the viability and success of historical uses, okay. arts, culture, and entertainment. Sure. All right. That's a good change. That that makes sense. It's consistent with the idea here. Uh, Jocelyn? Also, uh, C2 and C3 are so similar. I, f I feel there's probably a way to combine them and, and scale that down. Um, thank you for adding in the... Com uh, working with the cultural district, especially since uh, members of our community want to see some artistic pieces potentially go in. Right. Um, I mean, I also agree with Cameron and uh, Michelle. 
that Michelle. Yeah, that um it did I mean all of our past ones have highlighted the rodeo and I feel like as opposed to saying in ensuring that new venues or revamping because the old you know there's a way to still use that space you could put the new idea and and create a new covered rodeo space but you know I would I would still leave that space what it's designated and its historical purposes is mm -hmm. so I I think we should support that in some way okay in, within the wording all right very good thank you baron yeah i guess i'm just struggling with the fact that is the green light on sorry it, okay um with the fact that we none of the conversation that we've had have been around a new one use venue any of the discussions there's not been any discussions from the public in that um and what's the going, going to be the financial impact to the community um to build a you know one use venue. And, and again, I'm not recommending, nor is the team recommending. It's just- I just feel like that it got pushed in when it wasn't even discussed. So that, I guess that's where uh, just a little- Well, I think, I, mean? I think we've mentioned it in some ways, but not with a photo that would give people an idea of an actual functioning facility like this. The point being that economic viability is certainly a consideration for the rodeo right now. We know that. So well, not just the rodeo, I'm talking about civic public because somebody has to pay for it, right? At the end of the day, I mean, yes. it's not free. It, so. And we're just looking for ways to make sure all the venues succeed well into the future. That That's just to put that, that there as an idea. Let me just see if there's other hands up before we, uh, you know, go to Jocelyn again. Lindsay and then Chris. <laughs> Go back to where? Oh, no, this one. It it could be whatever we think it should be. There's no predetermined outcome here. We're just showing you this is a standalone facility that's reprogrammable. It doesn't have a rodeo in it. And then this is one that does. So it is. That's, yeah, that the, the way the interior is structured, it has multiple possibilities for what could happen in there. It's not just a single use building. That's, that's something we're trying to bring forward as we get into more work on the specific plan. I mean, we hope to bring six or a dozen examples and put those out there so we can see how they would possibly function here in this in this environment. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So we have different possibilities there. Lindsay? Um, I was just going to state that I, I do remember having several conversations of a multi-faceted type building. Um, that's been something that I know has been brought up in workshops it and has. something that we've talked about in the meeting a few different times. Yes. Um, and I, I do recall it in the last meeting too. And I, although I don't remember who it was, someone did bring up the fact that it having the word rodeo in here felt not inclusive to the other venues that are in the space. So right. I don't we know. I guess I just wanted to state that I, I remember that conversation. Right. Um, so Right, we're trying to respond to that. But I do think that. public comment too, to Michelle's point, when you read through them, there is obviously tons and tons of support right. for the rodeo staying in that location. I mean, for us as consultants coming from other places to work here in Reading, it's a unique feature. It's something that I think people treasure and we would want to find a way to secure it for the long term. Yeah, That's, that's my sense. I don't think there's any question about it. The question is where and how Mm -hmm. Can we do that? Because it does cost money, and we know the current rodeo facility does need significant upgrades in order to remain viable well into the future. And, you know, and that we've gotten from talking with rodeo representatives. So, uh, you know, however we get that done, we should be open to those possibilities at this stage. That's that's all we're suggesting, Ben. Just a wordsmithing piece on uh, C5, I might suggest collaborate instead of work. Say that again. 
C5, it says work with cultural district partners. I would suggest collaborate with cultural district okay. partners. It's just a- That makes sense. I'm a yeah. teacher at heart. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see, Jocelyn, go ahead. Uh, so the last thing that I was gonna say is if, if what you guys are proposing as a one-stop, you know, facility, then I would just say, because this is also the consistent concern of everybody across the board is then it needs to come with adequate parking yeah. for all of those things involved. So, so yeah. it comes back to, we're going to have to still address that issue. And again, I want to stress, we are not proposing it. We're saying this is one possibility and we should look at more options, more combinations and things. I think it would just do a good service to the Reading community that we do that. And is this being a long range plan? We're not looking at something that would happen in two years or even three years. It it's, could take some time for these things to evolve and ultimately be you know, changes on the ground. And I just so, wanna say that um, the rodeo definitely wants to see where it's at. And I think the general consensus, if you read through uh, everybody that's, commented is the same which is which is they want they want us to say it yeah right. yeah and that's something we we have to take into account i there's no question about it we're, we're not here to it's ultimately is a community decision not the consultant decision sure. uh, todd it's fun to go through this many times because then we could see all the things that we could point out maybe we should do one more round in like two weeks <laughs> just kidding <laughs> yeah um, I think uh, one of the one of the things to point out, this is my favorite section in economic development, not just to talk about economic viability, but also the the ability that we have as a community to continue to have this whole area. North and South Riverfront has an economic driver mm -hmm. for the area, not just economic viability, but actually like this is a place where we can have a huge economic impact for our community to, I mean, all the stuff that we see now, all the things that have already been mentioned, all the properties, the facilities, but this is not just we don't just want these to be viable. We can see this area has a way to really impact um, and multiply the economic impact for our region. So an, econ an economic driver, not just an area of economic viability. Right. And if I could comment on that too, from a consultant team perspective, I think for some people, when we say economic viability, it doesn't mean environmental destruction or degradation, that things can be done in a way that actually improve the environmental design and ecological functioning of these systems that are there. It all comes to how it's designed, how it's integrated into the landscape. There's a lot of different ways of building now that we can point to these examples and make those kinds of requirements for anything that happens on the riverfront and achieve that economic viability as a central tenant of whatever we're doing here. So. I think there's things that we can provide as a team on behalf of the community bringing this research to the table and then you can take a look at these different options. Okay, um, other comments, Cameron, go ahead. Yeah, and, and <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about this. I I, I do have to, to, to say, and I, I would like to propose to add in the language again regarding the rodeo grounds. I understand the inclusivity part, the rodeo, uh association has been the longest tenant by far and away sure. other than the asphalt cowboys they've been there 75 years we've been 70 and we are current tenants of a third a large portion of okay. the northern riverfront area and we've had thousands and thousands and thousands of petitions turned in a number of comments at all these specifically to keep the rodeo grounds by removing any mention of the rodeo or rodeo grounds, and mm -hmm. there could be other, I mean, I, I would fully understand and anticipate for Turtle Bay to be mentioned, or perhaps the Civic or something to be mentioned. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that said, this does seem like it's going down. I would read this document and these changes to read that this is this vision statement is an elimination of the rodeo grounds. Yeah, it's that was definitely not the intent. Then would we be able to put preservation of the rodeo grounds in here? I think the the public voice has been about a thousand to one in terms of what we've seen yeah. on paper um, in support of saving yeah. the rodeo grounds rather than 
not yeah. and I, I know this has been just because this has been brought up several yeah. times regarding the rodeo being part of a multi use facility run by somebody else, what have you. Yeah. Trouble with that becomes, and we've talked about this before, we're not a two week a year operation. And other facilities, other things we would have to have are a big integral part of that. So being saying, yeah. oh, we've got a facility, we'll just convert and rent it for a couple of weeks to the to the for the rodeo, isn't really uh, feasible. So again, I just this seems to be going down. I think this kind of had one of two different directions, maybe three. If this could be going. It, this sort of seems like an abrupt, really without a discussion or consensus among the coalition, mm -hmm. to sort of go in one direction with a whole new facility i i know as a representative of the cowboys yeah we we would we would like to see that language reinserted and again it's not a matter of inclusivity the 75 year tenant occupies a quarter to a third of that yeah riverfront and overwhelming community voice yeah no and if support. you you look at the uh Dozens of comments on the website. You'll see definitely comments from people who say we they want to keep the rodeo in place and at its current location. People are saying that there's no question. But again, just from my standpoint, our team standpoint, we're just trying to invite the community to think about the possibilities under the heading of economic viability, as Todd has said. Because right now the rodeo does have economic constraints and to maintain its viability, even in its current location, will take an investment uh, of the community. So we have to consider that option too, and Absolutely. we will. As would this. I just It seems like we're highlighting one, not the other. <laughs> right. Rather well, than saying we're doing both, one's being yeah. shifted, one specifically being mentioned with photos, right. the other, the other well, is been eliminated it wasn't right. the intent and that's why we didn't put any facility name there but we could we'd have to list them all the boat ramp the uh, cemetery all of these things are part of the history of that riverfront that we have right now so that's that kind of annotation could be put in there we we understand are there any other comments on this josh uh, quickly uh so i would fully support something that says even maybe the broadening this to include sports. What'd um, you say? Sports. It doesn't really say sports. sports. That could be included in here. Sure. To include the rodeo. Uh, I just want this as part of the record, though, because then we're creating a public record. Yeah. We've got really cool stuff. Yeah. We've got a uh, a rodeo grounds that's by a river. That's cool. It is. Um, that probably not a lot of places have that. Uh, but the other thing we have, and Julie Dyer, I wish she was here because she gets mad every time we bring this up is uh, we've got, I don't know if it's a Steinway piano or some other really fancy, expensive piano at the convention center. You mean the Civic Auditorium? That's uh, right, Civic Auditorium. Right. That Ray Charles played on the first, uh, you know, uh, concert in that venue. You know, so that's part of the history of this place. I've been pushing for Brian Wilson to come play it, but that's just <laughs> me. But we do have really neat stuff. The rodeo grounds is neat. The convention center is big a blight as people think it is, is neat. So I'm glad with the language being brought enough, but also specific to protect those things. Okay. Yes. All right. Thanks, Josh. Well, again, we're going to try to fashion the language here that reflects uh, coalition thinking for sure. Uh, yes, Rebecca. I just want to point out that um, you're right, economical viability does not necessarily mean environmental destruction, <laughs> but the way to ensure that it doesn't mean uh, environmental destruction is what I've mentioned before, an early involvement mm -hmm. of um, groups, the resource agencies. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, California Fish and Wildlife. So and you could be proactive about it and not reactive. Um, and so. we are being that way. We are being proactive. Yeah, we have to. It's to our best interest to find out what their points of concern are. And we are uh, already underway with some of the initial environmental studies, as we've said. Are we going to see any of the, I guess, are, we, are you guys? When we have that? those reports, they will be made available to the whole community. Okay. Absolutely. 
because we haven't begun the technical work just yet. That's This is just a framework. This wording is not the policy of the plan. We have to do all the technical work and then we write the policies. This is just a guiding vision document, but I'm sorry, we, we're, we can talk during the public comments, so we'll, I get it. Any other points on this section here? Uh, yeah, we'll just say that the Surplus Land Act, once we get through that, the specific plan that we're going through today um, and the Surplus Land Act, the rodeo will definitely be going after a long-term lease. Okay, good. So we know, and that's how we're going to be able to, um, you know, modernize the current rodeo. Okay, and I understand the council did uh, update, uh, approve the lease extension yeah. for the rodeo. Yeah, I appreciate it. Right, okay, so we're on board with that. Christina? Uh, yeah, I'll just say a, a couple of things. Just to, has, it is a guiding principle. So we're at that very, very high level. So identifying specific things or places, it doesn't necessarily have to come in here. It will, it will come in time. It will come when the plans are developed and that. And it has been there for a very long time. And I I was the one that had recommended bringing it out because it does, there's nowhere else in this guiding principles where we would identify something specifically because it's a very high level guiding principle purpose that we're here. It's a yeah. specific thing we're doing. Right. That being said, there are, yes, a lot of comments. Um, there's dozens, um, but they're also from something that's already there it's hard to comment on something that's not there from folks that haven't been able or had the experience to understand that or think about that as well. So we, I understand that there's, there's comments, but just wanted to point out it's, it's easy to comment from something that's there and that you love and it is harder. I understand. I do appreciate the, the photos and the ideas that are in here. I'm sure it's throwing everybody from a loop. It seems like you guys are just trying to give people an idea, <laughs> but we don't have to panic, right? We're not going to build this. It's just that to it again, we're, we are, it, I do a lot of engagement and it is hard to know what's not there. It's challenging for anybody. Um, when you're looking yeah. at something and you're used to it to envision what could be, well, um, so. that's, it's hard. And um, just to know, we are planners. We're not architects. We're right. going to propose any Same. buildings <laughs> as part of this. Same. We're setting a plan framework in motion and ultimately. And all of the comments and everything are, are, are saved. So when we do get past the guiding principles and we're into more of the planning, these don't go anywhere. Everybody's thoughts and, and feelings for planning and, and we they appreciate want to that. Or whatever that looks like, that's all saved, correct? Absolutely. So going anywhere. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, no, we appreciate that. It was very, very good clarifications, Christina. And that, that's how we look at these uh, materials at this point. We do envision, and Dan will say more about this later, but we'll be putting alternatives on the table and they'll have pluses and minuses. But from that process, we can pick and choose the elements that we like the most. It's just like when somebody renovates their home you know you get the interior designer in there or the architect or the landscape architect and they put all these ideas on the table and it's up to the community in this case to pick and choose what makes the most sense for this city and that's the process we'll be engaging in we thought that this vision and guiding principles document at the outset would at least set some very broad parameters that we could work within and clearly that includes the rodeo, the civic auditorium, it includes all the things that are there right now and finding a way to make them all fit together, being viable economically, that's that's our task. Uh, and those will all be revealed. There's nothing gonna happen behind the scenes. This is a fully transparent process. We're not developers, we're not designers, we're not proposing to build anything as a result of this planning effort. That's not our role. Okay, Jocelyn. I I just feel that maybe this just needs to be said. And of course, both of these two gentlemen can speak to it more. Um, I actually, I mean, I, I love the concept and idea of, of a covered venue, but I, I think in terms of with the rodeo, like sure, it's great as a performance space, but the rodeo probably eight to 10 months out of the year is using the space for rodeo purposes, two to five four or five days out of the week. And so, I mean, there are people, whether they're practicing, there are horses, there are people there. So, I mean, it's not just like, we just have the rodeo this this week or two, like for a lot of people, it is, it's, you know, eight, 10 months out of the year that it's being used for those purposes, which leaves a limited mm -hmm. viability use for concerts or 
other things, which is why oftentimes the concerts are after a rodeo event. And so just, just, I felt that that needed to be said sure. in terms of for the public wanting to just point out the rodeo grounds is not just a, it's a one or two week thing. This is, it's used right. most of the year. And I think for anybody that would be eventually hired to do a design of any kind of facility, it would have to be programmed and the programming would involve talking with each uh, organization, the, the rodeo, uh, the civic auditorium, uh, Turtle Bay, what, what do they need to have a fully functioning operation? What are they limited to by their current facility that could be improved upon moving to a new facility? So all of that is a detailed design programming stage. We are a very long way from that, where you're right, you have to see what could be fit together. You know, you can't put everything in the same space if there are multiple demands on that space for the same time of the year. That's normal, we would think that way. I mean, but like you take the Chase Center down in San Francisco, you know, they spend a lot of money on that and they don't just play basketball there. They do have concerts, they have other activities there that are making that thing a more viable, you know, or uh, facility. But we're not gonna build that here. That's probably way too grand. That's not the marketplace we have here. I'm just giving you an example that most venues of that type have to think in these terms. They have to think in terms of multiple uses and somehow fitting that together like puzzle pieces so that they can exist or coexist. And like you say, you don't have to have three parking garages to, to support all of these activities. Maybe there's just one uh, very well-designed parking facility that serves all of the activities that go on at the riverfront. That would make sense too. It's more compact, better utilization, and it would cover less ground, therefore more environmentally acceptable too. So those are the kinds of things, what could be shared, what can't be shared, that would all have to be studied as part of any of these proposals moving forward. So we don't know what that would be just yet. Okay, but the words here that you brought up, we will take another run at this in light of your comments here. So just so, rest assured, I'm thinking of some ways to, to do it so that we can um, uh, encapsulate these sentiments, but also to maintain this flexibility that we're trying to see, you know, as we come out of this document phase. Go ahead. Are we able to add the language to preserve the rodeo grounds? <laughs> Direct question. I mean, it's, oh, this, I this, docu this I, document reads that okay. of the elimination it doesn't, of the rodeo It doesn't say that. Uh, and it doesn't say for the rodeo grounds. I, I, I again, this is a very okay. large public point. So, what yeah. would be helpful uh, for you. staff? Yeah, what would be helpful for us? It's been good Go discussion. Ahead. Clearly, um, you know, good good viewpoints on both sides. What would personally be helpful for staff be before we go to city council with this would to have this coalition come to a consensus agreement on that point. Um, I think our coalition framework mentions the thumbs up, thumb down approach. However, you all want to do it here this evening but certainly would help us as we go to council to understand what this coalition's feeling on this matter are. That's completely fine. So if we wanna have a consensus determination on the specificity of the language, we're happy to hear that. And that's what we'll end up bringing to council for their review and approval. Okay. And ultimately the city council was meant to receive this document and they're gonna have their commentary on it too. We're looking to have something that could ultimately reflect uh, the community sentiment, including, you know, the desire to maintain the facilities we have there in some for form or fashion. So I think what you're suggesting, Jeremy, is we go around and see how each coalition uh, member would feel about some of this, the language. Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, yeah I think that's, I think that makes sense given the differing, this is probably one of the first times in four meetings where there's been some disagreement and some discussion like this. So I think it's it's completely fine. So we can bring that to council later for their consideration. I think that would be helpful for us. Okay, so, okay. But, so we'll do that then, right? Yeah, now. and I'd absolutely like to see a, a consensus. And I think part of it too, and, and Baron can allude to, uh, speak to it even some more. I mean, again, a lot of the, you know, maintenance and other issues and the economic viability, the amount of times used per year really hasn't been so much with regards to the facility. Um, it's been issues of, length of lease, parking, uh, uh, cooperation with regards to the, the other uses in the area. It's not necessarily a, a, 
what I would say is a, a facilities deficiency. So it again, and I just I bring it up because it's been a very loud voice. There've been thousands and thousands and thousands of petitions. I don't even know what the numbers at. Mm -hmm. Comments both at the two public workshops, um, certainly the, okay. the comments here, and it, long term tenant. It, it is something I think that does bear specific mm -hmm. mention, and we did have it, mm -hmm. and that's why having at a last meeting where we're not able to really go and see the revisions is impossible. Yes. And I, I also as well, and Baron will speak to this, the intention is absolutely to upgrade the facilities tremendously. And we would, would love to use them yeah. uh, more okay. often throughout the year. So let me just ask, what language would you want to see inserted at this point? And that's what we'll ask the uh, fellow members of the I coalition. I put it right in C4 that support the viability and success of arts, cultural, entertainment events, venues, events and venues in the area including the Reading Rodeo Grounds that are a key part of the unique history and identity of Reading. Okay, That'd including, a, including inserting that language, including Redding the Rodeo Red Grounds. Okay. I know a lot of times there's that uh, distinction between the rodeo and the rodeo grounds, but oftentimes we hear, well, we support the rodeo, and there's that, I think there's that thinking okay. that I see in this document, which is that, okay. um, yeah, just rent it out a, a week, a year for four days and everything will be fine. Okay. So, so. it would say this, and, and once again, could you repeat the phrase you said, to, including the preservation of the rodeo grounds? After events and venues, comma, or events and venues in the area, comma, including the rodeo grounds. That okay. are Reading Rodeo Grounds are a key okay. part of the unique history and identity of Reading. Okay, comma, including the rodeo grounds. So so we'll just go around the table and get a readout, okay, as Jeremy suggested. So do you, would you accept that language? No. You, the way it is, I kind of support what Christine said last time. Christina, sorry, just a little more generic. If you do that, you add the other uh, entities there. I'm not saying the Reading Rodeo is not important. Okay. I also said on the first meeting, I've never gone. However, I'm fine with it staying there. Okay. So no, I would like it to stay this generic. If we add it, we should add Turtle Bay and the Civic. Okay. All right. So as he proposed, no. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Daniel, keep a tally here. Okay. Baron. Sorry. Yeah, Melissa, so you were saying also include Turtle Bay? No problems there. I, they they are specific. But again, as Christina pointed out, this is like the beginning stages. This is like a two-year process, and this is a guiding document right now. But if we're going to put, if we're going to get wrapped around the axle okay. with this one thing, let's add like Turtle Bay and the Civic. Okay, so your, count, your uh, modified proposal would be... Uh, Entertainment events and venues in the area. I just like the more generic, including including yeah. the Civic Auditorium, okay. the Rodeo Grounds, Turtle Bay, the Boat Ramp, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I I wouldn't oppose that. That'd be fine by me. I'm okay. not sure that's what I'm totally into, but, but I I just I, again I'd like to see yeah. us reach a consensus. Can, so if there's okay variations, just like that's current and venues. Okay, current. this is good. No, this I is like the the other. This is why we set up the coalition. This yeah. is exactly what Jeremy said. So <laughs> we're it's important discussion. And also it's how we handle it that's important too. So let's go around the table with that modified proposal. You have, yes, before. Yeah, Mike, the Chris, sorry. Yeah. This word venue. Yeah. Okay. So how do we know in the future, what the combination of venues are, and I go back to if you're gonna, if, you know, with the with the rodeo, with the rodeo, we're gonna call it. It's a yeah, it's a venue. It is a yeah, it's a generic term. Uh, but uh, it, more specifically, so how does it give the rodeo association a collaborative? latitude to look into the future with reference to what how what is built to enhance them and so, i don't have an answer for that mm -hmm. we don't know what it, what they need to be fully viable well into the future that's what you're asking well yeah i mean to me the word venue it has you know has some 
value mm -hmm. as it uh, is, is, for example, what we know is at this point is that the Asphalt Cowboys, the Rodeo Association, we have Cool April Nights, those are venues. Mm -hmm. well, By cool, what? Well, Cool April Nights is a program. It's a program. It's an but event. I mean, it follows along with a cultural yeah. ethos of the, yeah, of I the think, region. I think the word venue implies a place, a setting with supporting elements that allow that activity to function successfully. Okay. That's a venue. Is that word strong? I guess my question is, is that word strong enough to give the 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 rodeo association a you know a reasonable way to look to protect looking into the future yeah well i think okay. so you're saying is that sufficient uh attention well like when i when i went when you showed me the you know the picture yeah okay it was very clear to me that's why i asked you about is that does that stand alone is it separate in that case, yes. in, in, in that, that case, case, it's the same. But could it be separate? Could it be a type of inclusive venue for something that works for the rodeo association? Yes, it could be. That's okay. why I'm saying we're at such an early stage. It's we we could design something very unique for this community, and we don't know what that combination of activities. Could, could we? Yeah. History and protocol that, that really puts us out there and hey, we preserve, right? Again, um, those, those locations and analysis for the day and, and, and the venues for this and why we learned from that, like those are historical places that people, everybody in town knows exist, right? They might not have gone sad and sad, but <laughs> all by, <laughs> all by, <laughs> okay. Um, so how would you word it, uh, Karen? I've got one. Well, take, go ahead. No. take out and, and after events put in existing venues in the area, because those are all current existing venues. And then you're you're sustaining the viability and integrity of those while tentatively improving, you know, working towards improving. So I, I mean, would say I say that that would exclude new venues then. I really think support the viability and success of historical uses, existing. arts, culture, and entertainment events. Yeah. And potentially integrating new venues. <laughs> We're not limiting. I like that. And so we're not limiting the possibility for new ones and we don't want to eliminate the existing ones. We want the new and the old to con to coexist uh, somewhere. <laughs> okay, right? So, all right, Let, let's, Leslie, is this? Um, support the viability and success of historical uses, comma, arts, culture, and entertainment events and venues as well as new possibilities. Well, venues to me could be new, or I don't think okay. you need to say new venues and old venues, you know. Okay, okay, good. Okay, that's right, that's right. You got it. Yes, okay, understood. So one more time, Michelle. Support the viability and success of Historical uses, which are numerous, I do, not that, but we've agreed they're numerous. You listed them all. Um, and then, Jocelyn, are you saying, and entertainment events and current venues in the area? I would say current events and venues, or current events and current venues because we talked about i brought this up at the last meeting that cool april nights is a huge economic driver for this community it's not mentioned anywhere in this document tonight that i can find so i would concur that we do want to support those current events support the viability and success of of historical uses, 
comment, including I think we're covered as is. We've got new venues listed in C23. Okay, we said then, new. And then in C4, the end is the events and venues in the area that are a key part of the unique history and identity of Reading. Okay. So I, could, I think we're covered as is with what is a unique history and identity of Reading, which would, we don't have to list them all, would include rodeo grounds or other places in that area. Okay. I think we're covered. Okay, Baron, you had. Right okay, <laughs> wait. Okay, here. Adding historical uses in C4. Support the viability and success of historical uses, arts, cultural, and entertainment events and venues in the area that are key part of the unique history and identity of Reading. Is that Melissa, Danica? Yes, yes. Michelle, yes. Josh, Chris. You can go along with it. <laughs> Ben, Cameron. Again, I'm trying to, to work with the coalition to get a consensus. I'd rather okay. see the verbiage, but okay, I can Rebecca? live with that. I think the way that it is now is uh, a lot better. Um, being a master, having a master's in English will tell you his, but, historical but, uses and but you can go awkward. okay, awkward. but you can go with it. Uh, I guess yeah, I'm okay. going to be outnumbered anyway. So okay, yes, <laughs> I like the way it's not. It is now. Okay, we're we're just adding the words historical uh, uh, historical uses. Yeah, that's all we're doing. Yeah. Oh okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll right. we'll we'll clean up. We'll make sure the grammar works. Okay. All right. Thank can you, I, everybody. Can I make a comment? Oh, uh, can I make one comment? Oh, go ahead. Wait. Okay. Let's get our attention back here. Ben? Might I suggest that we, it, it's interesting to me that the new things come before the old things. I would recommend that we move C4 to C2 and sort of scoot the new stuff down. Okay. Because that creates a priority, doesn't it? That's, <laughs> all right. We do it. Let's go. Dan has made the note. We're going to move on. Thank you. I know you're going to move on, but I just want to say that, you know, as um, from the Rodeo Association, we appreciate the coalition and MIG and the city of Reading for, you know, putting this on and all the work that's being done to get here. And I, I guess I would just made run, one recommendation because you or you know, it was thrown out there with this semi big change on everything that's said. And then we've got all these pictures for indoor venues, but no outdoor venues. I think if there would have been some yeah. balance of a little bit of both. Okay. Um, it wouldn't have got so sideways. Yeah. Um, so, but we do appreciate you. I just want you to know that. that the, well, it, thank it, you. It didn't get sideways, and you know it, that's how it got sideways. And yeah. that would be my only recommendation going forward. Is there okay. also an outdoor venue, um, with the same style look? Since we're already talking to the Reading Civic about holding those outdoor their outdoor concerts when um, yeah the rodeo grounds is rehabbed, along with you know obviously Reading Rancheria and the powwow that's currently going on there. Um, I'm sure they would love for it to be modern as well. So that's all I have to say, and we do appreciate you. I appreciate your comments. Thank you, Baron. And those are good, good points. And uh, I think we agree with the order change as Ben suggested. I like it. Very, very, very good work. Thank you. Okay, a uh, couple more to go. The vision element D, appropriate scale and uses. I think we made a few changes here, but D1 was to require new buildings and uses to reflect the scale and character of Reading, to design community destinations that are safe, well-lit, easy to access, and ADA accessible. This was a new one that we worded, maintain the personality and character of the existing surrounding neighborhoods and identify opportunities to increase neighborhood-focused amenities. Uh, for the Northern Riverfront, 
we said create vibrant and active public uses that support local people and visitors, identify ways to maintain or reduce developed site coverage, so we can still maintain the same activities in a more environmentally compatible way, I believe through good design. And for the Southern Riverfront to consider opportunities to support local housing needs. So we took out workforce because we were getting into a whole technical discussion. And at this point, we said housing that's appropriate. Uh, consider how development on Park Marina Drive will impact existing and future circulation to reduce congestion. That's already part of the uh, Park Marina Drive study. Create opportunities for private recreation and amenities on or next to the quarry ponds and consider additional commercial restaurants, mixed use projects along Park Marina Drive that are compatible uh, with surrounding neighborhoods. So again, that's a very broad definition. That's something we'd have to work out on the uh, specifics there. So uh, let me go, oh, sorry, I went in the wrong direction. So any uh, adjustments to that language? Okay, Michelle. It, this occurred to me while I was driving in the south section past those lovely multi-story office buildings that went up about a decade ago. Mm -hmm. And I, this, my comment is addresses the scale. I, I would like to see something that mentioned preservation of our view shed. Okay, that's a missing item. Yes, that's, because, mm -hmm. um, and it's more than just looking out at the water. Mm -hmm. Our red bluffs are iconic. Mm -hmm. in this area mm -hmm. and those office buildings are perfect examples of how you, they block you mm -hmm. cannot see any of that so in terms of scale i think mm -hmm. preservation or enhancement or view shed is an important item and i think good designers architects can plan that so that those character defining views and uh, view elements can be maintained other cities have actually done that and it doesn't mean a restriction on what could happen there, just through good design. It's a great point. We don't, we didn't talk about uh, views. Any other additions on this one? Okay. E is about world-class recreation. Provide additional opportunities for boating, fishing, kayaking, and other uh, activities on the water. I think we need to improve the wording there on E1, Dan, just notice that. E2, promote aquatic activities in areas that are accessible and safe. For example, calm water, warmer temperatures, away from boating activities. Promote outdoor activities and connections to nature that support health and well-being. Leverage the Reading Riverfront as a base camp for outdoor enthusiasts visiting the region's, out the, uh, the region's outdoor destinations. I think we might be missing an apostrophe there. And then E5, focus low impact activities within public areas and sensitive habitats, Northern Riverfront, Sacramento River, and more intense activities with private outdoor spaces and quarry ponds. Okay, uh, that, Oops, I went the wrong direction again. Okay, anything else on this uh, item? Yeah, and ben. enthusiasts should be plural. Enthusiasts, yes. There, we want one more, more than one to come. <laughs> we, there's only one enthusiast. They're really yeah. enthusiastic. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, say? you got it. Thank you. A couple of edits there. All right, connected spaces to expand opportunities for people to connect with the natural areas and the Sacramento River, enhance vehicular transit, bicycle and pedestrian connections from existing neighborhoods to the area and between major destinations within the area, identify ways to connect or reconnect the Northern and Southern riverfronts to each other and to downtown. That was a specific idea that came out last time Identify parking locations, types and management strategies to ensure that current and future uses and activities have adequate but not excessive parking. And require new uses and spaces to be fully ADA accessible, expand ADA accessibility to and within existing uses and neighborhoods. Okay, all right. So anything on connected spaces? Yes, go ahead, Garrett. 
Uh, so I might have missed uh, my bus here. Um, uh, the point I want to make, it could be tied to A3, A4 um, in the environment. It could uh, go into G3, but really it had to do with the conversation we had a few weeks ago regarding uh, setbacks and repairing areas yeah. um, and, and those sorts of things. Um, I was reviewing the uh, old specific plan, and there were some really neat details about river adjacent um, features, um, uh, similar to a river walk. There's some public comments along that that allowed people, it, it was uh, some form of retaining wall uh, with landscaping features, uh, things like that, um, that allowed people to walk along the river safely um, in a well-lit environment. Um, and But that does include you know, removing some repairing area. And I know there's issues with the, spit, the fish spawning and things like that, but I think there's opportunity there. Um, you know, we've got a lot of space along the riverfront here. And, and you know, this being the, um, uh, jewel, you know, that I think we all can envision it being, um, having a place uh, where people could walk along that I think it, it, it might uh, be worth um, tailoring some spaces to mm -hmm. meet that need. And, um, you know, one thing, it goes towards safety because um, some of those repairing areas are where you find um, some of the more uh, concentrated areas for uh, homeless and, and and things like that. So if you if you clean that out, you light it, you put a nice uh, walkable area along the river. I think it would mm -hmm. uh, be a boon to the community and the businesses and everything like that. Um, and to not be afraid of potentially mitigating um, some of the environmental setback issues, things like that. And working with obviously you have to get through uh, fish and game and everything like that. But um, I, I thought there were some really neat details uh, in the last specific plan that directly uh, addressed that mm -hmm. um, kind of connected space. Yeah, well, this is this is the challenge. How do you provide the access but not also impact or degrade the ecological functioning of these areas? You know, that it requires a lot of sensitive design and placement of those sort of facilities. So, you know, when you say lighting, uh, that is one of the impacts that you have to be concerned about, you know. So, uh, I mean, have you? Do you have an example of where you've seen that being done well, or that you would point to? Because we always like to have some precedent uh, projects or images. Yeah, Ashland's got it. Ben's got it. Uh, Reno's got it. Um, they're they're urban river walks where you have. Um, you know, places that have been built up, um, you well, know, they're more, they are more urban, those, those places. You mentioned. Exactly. But I think, you know, here, you know, especially as, as this riverfront will inevitably grow and it'll give, I mean, someone came up, uh, I think it was in our second meeting and talked about having a place where they could, you know, get to the river and even just being able to, mm -hmm. you know, stand next to the river as it's flowing. I mean, there's, there's a piece to it and there's something that brings you closer to it now, you know, with a 50 foot setback and, mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, bushes and trees and everything to get there, you, you, you feel not as connected as you could. And, and I understand, you know, the environmental and sensitivity of it, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's, there's ways, like you said, to mitigate that um, with, through design and other ways. But um, it's just something that, you know, I think really when you're in those places, it makes you feel like you're on the water. Mm -hmm. And I think this area, specifically the Park Marina Riverfront, uh, could really use uh, something like that to make people feel like they're on the river mm -hmm. so rather you're than thinking of it, next to the river. So you're thinking of it specifically for the southern portion of the... I, well, I, I think that makes the most sense because mm -hmm. typically it's when you have businesses and, and we have river walks. I mean, the, the around Turtle Bay, you've, you've got, you know, the river walks. I don't, I don't see a place for it really there. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I could totally be wrong. I mean, I'm sure people have great ideas that could implement these things, but okay. it, it feels like the Park Marine area would be the, the prime area for something like this. So in a way that doesn't uh, negatively impact uh, the surrounding environment. Yeah. 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 But it was all faced down the trail. Mm -hmm. so you yeah. Right. Down. Right. Downward facing control. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Un understood. Okay. Uh, Rebecca. Um, yeah. There. There has to be no buffer zones. Uh, 
So I, th I believe that DFW before recommended about 200 feet from the river. Um, but again, this is why an early consultation uh, would be great because then you can do a case by case. Mm -hmm. The Sacramento River is very unique. You can do a case by case um, examination of areas to see how how many feet the the no the the buffer zone needs to mm -hmm. be. But it could vary uh, depending on the, the circumstances of each area. And uh, buffer zone does not exactly mean a paved trail. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, well, there are different surface treatments that could be used too that are more uh, naturalistic and be more uh, less, you know, you know more in, uh, more pervious as opposed to impervious surfaces. But uh, did you have well, well, we'll work something like that into the mix, then, Garrett. I I don't know, but again, I'm concerned about how this would be uh, worded because it has it's so much context specific, you know. I don't think you could say it would be every edge of, throughout the entire study area, but did you have some area specifically in mind that you say the southern portion primarily? No, I, not, oh. not specifically, but, you know, something that might, you know, work well, you know, if I was just looking at it would be, uh, you know, around the, the pond there because it's more of, a, it doesn't have the, the flows that the main channel does. I mean, I think it, you'd have to look at the environmental study and uh, I mean, really the, the hydrology, everything um, okay. before you could make it, a, a, you know. Okay. Uh, Dan, what's the language that you have there so far so we can just test it with the group? Did you? Um... Okay, so you, I think it has to do with providing some uh, areas uh, for people to uh, gain proximity to the river, I, I believe. Is that right, Garrett? Where you want to have some places where you can actually come close to and experience the river as yes. opposed to, you know, a long distance away. Okay. Well, there's some... Without, yeah, go ahead. There's some examples, like, directly underneath the Sundial Bridge, there's a paved walkway that's ADA accessible, I believe, that people are constantly grouping up at. And it's yeah. a small area, but it's got that nice, stable non-weather dependent access nobody's gonna slip in the river and that sort of thing so that might be one spot that's already existent okay similar to that and i've seen this in eugene oregon along the uh, river there too where you have very naturalized environment and there are uh, you know walking uh, trails in throughout uh, those the areas part of downtown uh, eugene yeah if you had specific access points rather than just a path running along the edge because the when you remove that, when you right. all the riparian area, then you've ruined that habitat. But if you put specific access points spots, up. then you've limited. Okay. Consider locations, uh, points that, like you say, points of that where people can experience the river more directly. And people use that pond, whether it's developed or not. <laughs> yeah. Kids down there feeding the ducks all the time. Okay. All right. Uh, Jocelyn and then Christina. Chris, you might be able to speak to this. Um, there is, uh, in the southern portion at least, underneath um, the Cypress Bridge, there is a whole walkway already along the river, and it goes back behind Riverside Eye Care, but I don't know where it stops. But that's a paved one, whereas you spoke to Ashland um, in, in the park up there. It's actually bark. It's a bark path, and so that it doesn't destroy the integrity along the river. Um, and then it it does have kind of reinforcing um, bank edges so that it, it maintains that integrity um, for people to walk mm -hmm. on safely and they're always monitoring it. But yeah. um, there is already a somewhat paved walkway along there that goes all the way into the homes over here. Okay. So I, but I don't know how far it goes towards on, on your property if it does. So. Okay. So we have examples here where to illustrate what uh, Garrett was talking about. Okay. Um, so, oh yeah, sorry, Christina. No, I think, there we go. I think um, we might be able to capture it in F1 because you we kind of have the connect and maybe just yeah. expand that to say identify and expand opportunities for people to connect and interact with the natural area yeah. of the Sacramento River. Something good call. Like that. So it sounds like there wants to be sort of like a tangible opportunity, right? That's to a good. interact and she, sort of. She's saying identify and expand right. opportunities. 
high five the water like how <laughs> uh, we could just say like that's the thing right yeah you said identify and expand opportunities for people to connect and interact with connect and interact with, and the, with the with the river uh and and natural natural areas Oop. that's noisy paper over there <laughs> all right okay i think we got it Okay, anything else on this section? We go to the last one, memorable and vibrant places. This one certainly is pictured there. Um, make the Reading Riverfront safe, visible, welcoming, walkable. Consider community gathering spaces for the community to share, including community gardens, dog parks, pocket parks, outdoor music venues, and public art. To create development regulations, design guidelines, and implementation strategies tailored to the Reading Riverfront. Identify and address any constraints imposed by the State of California 2019 Surplus Lands Act. Leverage the current specific plan and community process to analyze the economic feasibility of a range of private projects, such as new development, recreation, Identify public investment costs and grant funding opportunities, for example, ecosystem restoration, open space enhancements, infrastructure, recreation. And identify opportunities for new public infrastructure and operations funding mechanisms, such as BIDs, community facility districts, or tax increment financing districts. So there were no changes made to this from the last time. All right. So uh, I think that brings us to the last part of this. And I just wanted to go around the table and see if you had any other last points, any additional comments before we wrap up this portion of the meeting. We'll go to public comments here. And I'll just go around the table, starting with Melissa. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Are you comfortable with the, uh, the direction we have with the modifications we talked about this evening? No, I, I think it's a good starting point. I think it's probably going to change a little bit. This is getting the process, and um, yeah, I'll try to keep up with it. And got a few things that I thought were important in about more open space and rewilding and some. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I think it's actually pretty good. It's a good start. Okay, good. Thanks. Uh, Baron, anything else to add? Nope, but thanks. It's been fun. <laughs> Look forward to the rest. Okay. We'll be at the meetings. It's been a rodeo. No, okay. A, <laughs> a couple times tonight. Yes. Uh, Danica. I agree. I'm good. Thank you very much. Anything else to add, Jocelyn? No, I, I think it's been wonderful working um, and collaborating with all of you on this. And I think that we have created a good outline for um, what to have the public's opinion and, and yeah. keep the integrity starting point. Thank you, Jocelyn. Todd? I think overall, yeah, it went pretty well. Um, I think I'll just reemphasize my point from earlier that, you know, this can really be a catalyst for a major shift and change in our community um, or to even improve upon the things that we already have. So I think, yeah, just I'm excited to see what the economic impact um, analysis comes back with and the ways that we can enable the city to be financially feasible for future improvements. And then on the South Riverfront ways to enable private landowners to further develop their properties and hopefully this can be a, a really helpful point for them to jump off from. Very good. Thank you, Todd. Uh, Lindsay? Um, no, I, I think that we've covered a lot and I do really appreciate the process. I think you're a fantastic moderator and helped us all get to something that we <laughs> yes. can agree upon. Thank you. Um, and yeah, excited for the future. So thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Christina? Uh, no, good job, everyone. And just keep coming back and participating everyone this is just a very small section so keep sending in your emails and your comments so that can be captured and can continue to go into the development of what those alternatives and that the rest of it will come i know it feels like a lot and everyone just kind of that's right to stay tuned and stay engaged very well stated thank you michelle these have been four fabulous brainstorming sessions, <laughs> and I really do appreciate the thoughtfulness of my fellow coalition members, and it's your love for the river is very obvious and much appreciated. That's I'm great. Thank you very much. Okay, Leslie. 
Yeah, no, I think it's been great. Thank you both for facilitating and I look forward to what's coming. All right, thank you, Josh. Yeah, uh, thanks really quick. So uh, the, the definition we were given of consensus, I think we've met. <laughs> uh, it says, I believe other participants understand my point of view. I believe I understand other participants' points of view. And whether or not I prefer this choice, I support it because it was arrived at openly and fairly based on good information. And it is the best decision for us at this time. We did a good job with that. All right. The other thing I want to say is Dan's penmanship should be, you know, <laughs> remarked upon. <laughs> because honestly, you take pictures of it, you give it back. It, it's your, you did a good job, Dan. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. I think it's for beginning to reach the zone of balance and I think there's a lot more to talk about and we got a future right okay. we got a future because we got <laughs> good stuff and it'll be fun all right yeah. that's a good attitude all right thank you Garrett uh, big thanks to my fellow coalition members uh, it was a lot of fun these last uh, four out of eight Mondays, but, um, you know, big thanks to MIG, the city, everybody. I think we got a great uh, jumping off point here. Excited to see uh, what this turns into and uh, the future of the riverfront. All right. Dan? As someone that works with the youth is community, I'm really excited with the good work that was done here and the direction this document is going to lead our city in. Okay, great. Well done, everyone. Thank you, Ben. Cameron? Yeah, and as the Asphalt Cowboys, we just uh, appreciate the process and Look forward to, to the next phases. All right, thank you. And Rebecca. Um, thank you everyone. It was great to be part of this coalition. And I think we definitely all agree on one thing that the riverfront in Reading is so unique that you have no idea what you have. I mean, you do have an idea, that's why we're here discussing <laughs> right. it. But I think we're the consensus here is that we all know what we have and we're gonna protect it and that's that's why this is very important and this is just the beginning of it and i'm very much looking forward to what comes excellent very good thank you rebecca all right so that is our vision element framework guiding principles uh we're going to go to public comments and then after that we do have a few things to say about the process uh, moving forward, it won't take very long. So let's see what we have. And uh, uh, Jeremy, if you want to use that microphone, I'll bring you another one. We can call the speakers up here one by one. Sure thing. And if you haven't had a chance to grab a blue card from the back and you'd like to provide public comment, please do so. Okay, your attention, please. We're, we got one Sorry. more step here. This there mic's not very loud. So um, first up is Ted Landis. And again, if you'd like to speak, bring your blue card up to me, please. Yeah. And reminder, we have a three minute timer up here. Thank you. My microphone's in the right order. Greetings, everyone. I'm here. sure everybody's here. Uh, happily missing the football game tonight. Uh, kind of blew it, but anyway, uh, it. I put together some notes that I made uh, prior to coming here tonight, and you covered a lot of it, so I'm not going to be redundant. Also, I haven't been here since the, the start of all your mission, uh, commission meetings, but uh, I just want to share some of the history that I have, mm -hmm. and uh, I would like to see some of the mistakes that I've seen made not being made here. And uh, basically, we're sitting... And, a very, very privileged area to have a river down the middle of our city, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, it's not being utilized to the fullest extent. From what this lady said, and I, I didn't know that, but you have that 200 foot setback to be along the water. I was lucky in the later 60s, early 70s, I lived in Marina del Rey. No, I wasn't rich. I had three roommates and we all rented a little house. It was $125 a month, but at on uh, the east end of Marina del Rey, it was being built, and then they finished it when we were there. Mm -hmm. There's a walkway, like River Walk, in Reno, and I conceptualized that with being here, and how many nights, we moved here, we bought our property in 75, 
So we've been here a couple of years. I don't, I can't tell you, and I don't know anybody in this room that hasn't said on an August night when it's a hundred degrees, God, I'd like to go down on the river and have a dinner. And you know, we don't have one place on the river, not one. Well, may, maybe there's one, <laughs> but that's not what I'm talking about. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, go ahead. But anyway, I, I'm my vision, and I'm not taking the whole river, I'm just taking a small amount. Chris's property, I'm going to take that. <laughs> just that, that small we're friends piece. There. <laughs> we were. <laughs> anyway, just a short, short piece of land and put in a, a Cape Cod like they have at Marina Del Rey or Riverwalk, we have some restaurants and shops. So you don't have to have, I don't know how much footage Shasta County has of the river, but you don't need to 10 miles of it, just to span from, let's say, Chris's mm -hmm. property down to the the uh, the uh, Mossadenokian building. That There's about a mile there, maybe less. And just have that amount for a walkway with the restaurants. Mm -hmm. I think that would be the biggest plus return on investment that I could see. Mm -hmm. I remember, and I'm gonna make it short, growing up, the strawberry fields in Buena Park were not very far enough. I remember Santa Ana with the chili fields. I remember Whittier with the orange groves. Uh oh, I'm up. <laughs> anyway, I remember all this. I don't wanna see our area that has this property go to like that did. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. By the way, which team were you in favor of? The Eagles or Kansas City? What which team were you rooting for? The Eagles or the Chiefs? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Taylor Swift. He's he's a he's okay. a Swifty. He's a Swifty, I okay. think. Okay. Marge Cantrell. Marge Cantrell is up next. All right. Can't beat that. All right. <laughs> I'm Marge Cantrell, and I have lived here since I was four, off and on. And I've been to 22 countries, and I don't think we need to copy any of them. I think we have a unique town. That's why I'm still here. I am concerned about other people that you're meeting with. Are you meeting with Chris and his architects. Are you meeting with the McConnell Foundation and K2? Are you meeting with um, other groups in town? Um, and they are things that aren't being brought up at these meetings that the public is invited to. Number two, um, the Civic Auditorium was chosen by 12 city citizens, a building contractor, an electrical contractor, a CPA, a banker, et cetera. And they chose that design, not the prettiest building in the world, but it was the easiest to maintain. And we need to continue to maintain it. When it was built, there was a knowledgeable manager of that building and we had venues all the time. It was completely full. And it's obvious that the current leaser that has a long lease um, it has a different objection, uh, uh, um, object. Um, Objective. So, Rodeo Grounds has not been developed because they don't have a long lease and they do have money to invest in it, perhaps in covers and and um, different types of programs, but they have not been able to because they've been limited by our city council. Um, number three, I wanna make sure that this word keeps coming up is surplus property. And on the north end of this river, there is no sur surplus property there's not gonna be a low income housing built down there. There's great public uh, objection to it. It's been brought up in numerous times in various circles and everyone I talk to and having owned stores, having a lot of people uh, that I've talked to not only in business and privately, get rid of the words surplus property. Um, we, have, we have a treasure here it's something that we can enjoy forever. There's um, lots of designers, architects that Chris has been meeting with and he's been ready to do this ever since uh, he got the property back. 
the reason Park Marina Drive looks like it does with the closed buildings and the boarded up is because the McConnell Foundation made it that way. And we wanna make sure that somebody responsible that knows this city can develop it. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Cassandra Curl. Custom Commission, I just wanted to um, thank you. In our language, we say Chalabaskin. Because my spirit shows gratitude. I apologize. It's clear in me being here for the first time that every single one of you, not, not all of you specifically, but all of you out here care about the river. I was asked to come here by Chief Kelly Sisk from the Winnemumwintu tribe. Um, she asked me to make sure that you all understand that the Winnemum opposed the development, that any development that would negatively impact the salmon or uh, tribal access to the river, um, and that would include any type of housing infrastructure. Um, also wanted to address a couple of things. I apologize, Rebecca, for cutting you off. And, for speaking out, out of turn, um, okay. but I just wanted to address quickly, I noticed a couple of spaces, I, I'm sorry, I left my notebook over there. Um, I wanna say maybe it was a D51. There was a few different spots where it said private, and I'm not understanding if that means private homeowners in that area, or if those were like private development companies. So I'm not sure how that gets addressed, but just wanted to put, point out that I didn't recognize that. Mm -hmm. And also, um, um, in talking about the trails or walking trails along the riverbed, um, in some of those other areas that you mentioned where there are trails, they don't have endangered Chinook winter run salmon there. There are only very, very specific places where those salmon can spawn or will spawn. And because of the the construction of Shasta Dam, those are even more limited, mm -hmm. which is why they're endangered. So I am interested and I will be very excited to see what that environmental impact report brings. Um, outside of me being asked to speak on behalf of the tribe, I'm be speaking on behalf of myself at this moment. Mm -hmm. um, my children live here. We believe that we always work towards the seventh generation. So if I think that that way, three generations behind me, my parents, my grandparents, my great grandparents, my children, my great, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren. Mm -hmm. I want all of them to have safe places to walk on the river. I agree with that 100%. We have to progress, but we have to do it in a responsible way, in a in, um, respectful way, and in a way that we hold people responsible when they say they're going to do something and they don't. Mm -hmm. uh, the accountability part has been missing here for quite some time in, on behalf of the tribe. Thank you for your time. Again, Shalabaskin. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Okay, Susan Murray, please. Thank you for letting me speak tonight. Imagine if it was decided that the rodeo uh, rodeo grounds were given a 25 year lease, which meant they could do some some much needed repairs, improvement, and hold all the events they want to. That would be great, wouldn't it? So you ask, what about the civic auditorium? Well, it has been hinted and talked about before that the civic should be torn down instead of remodeled, and a new building should be built in its place. A tear down of the civic auditorium would cost a bundle, and the amount of the uh, the original bid on a brand new building never remains the original number. It always ends up higher than expected. Cool April Nights Car Show event brings in approximately $8.7 million to the community, which includes revenues from hotels, restaurants, shopping, and you can't leave out the gas stations. If a new civic auditorium is built, that will be lost uh, revenue for how long? Also along with those same lines is the 4th of July festival, 
all the concerts and performances at the Civic that would bring the people in far and wide? How long would it take for the new building to be built? Think about the loss of revenue, which will be thousands and thousands of dollars that people in our city depend on year to year from all these events. Can the city of Reading really afford tear, a tear down of the Civic and who is going to pay for another building? Let me just put something out there. Is it possible that a new location for the Civic Auditorium could be built with the adequate parking, with better access, less congestion to and from the new Civic, and better connectivity to the freeways to bring bigger concerts, plays, et cetera, to our area? If we could still keep the Civic Auditorium where it is right now, and still have the events that we have until the new one is built. Of course, if the money was of no object uh, and mm -hmm. it grew on trees, then two uh, civic auditoriums could be remodeled and rebuilt. So we can all dream, can't we? Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, Joyce Kreller. Joyce? There you are. A couple questions. Um, when this this is the last meeting for the coalition, and this project will be going, I guess, to the city council. Will there be more community involvement allowed? And if there should be discussion about what building one facility that would have multiple uses, will there be any? Uh, community input, or will it all be decided by the council? Um, I have another question. Is it possible for the rodeo grounds to be able to maintain their current, the current usage that they have from day to day or week to week, and be able to use a multi-use facility for the rodeo? And then I I came up with a a good thought about that C4 subject that kind of went around for a while. It could be um, if you said, in addition to the existing facilities, comma, support, da 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 da. So that could be instead of adding all those other commas and da 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 da, -da it could be taken care of in just that simple. Okay. Simple. Mess with, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, again, we'll repeat. This is the beginning. There's going to be a lot more public community comment uh, venues and opportunities. We're only at the beginning. So this is not the end of that process to be shared. Anything else? Uh, yeah, Shirley. Thank you all for what you've done. I look forward to the future for my kids and you know, like future generations. Um, I had four points that I saw, two on the um, specific on some points. One was C5, I, as an observer, I was thinking that maybe people kind of got hung up on the word cultural district. Um, to me as an outsider, I'm like cultural district that brings up art, the museum that left off the rodeo. So that was me as an observer, and I can understand why this gentleman over here was particularly upset about yeah. not including the rodeo. So thank you for reincorporating that. Um, otherwise, um, on number D52, I noticed that it talked about um, the road, you know, about looking at the, it was a D52, it, was, um, it said the future circulation to reduce congestion, this was talking about Park Marina Drive, but there was nothing about it about protecting the property, um, you know, about cars. Um, there's people whose cars have been hit by traffic, that kind of thing. I think something in there that's saying when they're redesigning this road to look at the protection of the uh, citizens on the mm -hmm. crosswalks, um, parking, you know, so cars aren't being hit along that. Something along that line was missing there. And I noticed that that was something that was brought up on a, um, a prior meeting that people were concerned about that. 
Okay. And so I think putting that back in or somehow would be appropriate. And then um, two comments. I know that we're not really focused on a particular building yet, but I wanted to say that when I saw that, the first thing I saw in the big building was the effect of the lights on the river um, for the fish, for spawning, that kind of thing. I thought, uh, I don't think that's a great place for this, you know? Um, it looks really pretty reflecting on the water, but I think there's gonna be potential problems with that. I know with the Sendow Bridge, they had to reduce the light pollution. So that kind of um, venue may or may not be appropriate here. And, um, and then um, um, I also, as a community member, I love the rodeo being outdoors. I like, you know, being out there. I don't, I think it's gonna feel claustrophobic being inside a building. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the other people in this public are gonna feel about that, but I think that's something to be addressed when you're talking about a multi-use venue in our community. Sure. Thank you. All right, great, thank you very much. Okay, a few more here, Mary Olsa. I want to thank you guys for doing this. Um, I was born and raised here. I'm 65 years old, so I've seen a lot of changes in Reading, and I love Reading. I love Crutus Park. I love a Park Marina. My daughter happened to move down there. I've been around there. 80 miles per hour cars suck, and it's noisy. It's it's disastrous. Um, I wanted to say a few places my husband and I go that I enjoy, Idaho Falls. The pathway around the falls is gorgeous. They put little out things where you can go and stand above the water. It's beautiful. You guys have talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to mention Doc Clary's. Used to be, you could see all of Reading. They took that down, they put up what a dental building. So only a few people get to see the beautiful surrounding views of Reading. Um, I wanted to thank Michelle for her comments about the bluffs. Um, I really hate to see you build anything down there by the river, the south side, where it takes away our citizens view of our gorgeous river. In South Dakota, they had um, a dam break and they never wanted to have water um, people live where they would die so they put a park all the way through South Dakota and they put rose gardens they put flower gardens and I would like to see something like that in that area hmm. around the ponds um, restaurants right on the river I agree with that totally and um Safe walks with lighting where, you know, we can be safe. And one other thing I want to say, I would love to have a miniature golf back where we had the miniature golf in shade, mm -hmm. where it was cool in Redding, California. Anyhow. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Ken Coster. followed by Bennett Gooch. Good evening, I'm Ken Coster. I'm the Vice President of Cool April Nights. I'd like to thank you guys for bringing up Cool April Nights. I really appreciate that. I think with us and the rodeo, and uh, we bring in a lot of money into this town during April and May. And we appreciate everybody thinking of us. Trust us, we really do. And we use the Civic Auditorium to park up to 2,000 cars. Mm. And it's a big event for us. We have 27 show and shines going on throughout the whole week. And it's a lot of fun. We bring a lot of people from this community and everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only thing we were looking at, and we want to get more involved with this, yeah. is the uh, parking structure. I'm not sure what that is. Is it going to be on the grounds of Civic Auditorium? Uh, how much space will that take? Because 
we we park 2000 cars in there and that's going to be detrimental to us parking cars mm -hmm. so we'd like to keep more involved with this mm -hmm. um there's 13 of us on the board and we do a lot of work we we open up registration december 1st and we already expect a full a full 2000 cars again this year or uh 2024 already 2024 wow yeah but thanks again, because what you guys are doing could be really good for this community. And I'd like to make sure that you contact either me or someone on the board and we'll, we'll come here, get involved and uh, give you our point of view. Excellent. But we appreciate it. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. And then Bennett. We'll make this quick. Um, I'm the president of Reading Rodeo Association, and it's been fun to sit back and watch this. Um, I was going to be out of town one of the meetings, so Baron has sat on the table for us, and it's been very, very, very difficult for me to sit in the back and not answer and say, here's the answer. Here's what here's what we can do. Anyway, uh, I just want to say um, thanks for letting us be a part of this. Um, you know, we've been trying for many, many years to redesign and reincorporate down there so that we can fit in with our neighbors with advanced reading and, and whatnot to be able to share venues and be able to mesh together mm -hmm. um, i do hear a lot of comment that our area is underutilized and i just like to clarify that that city staff has kind of held our hands behind our back and allowed us rodeo week and one week in the year so that's why we can't have events down there we sneak them in like the powwow and everything else we kind of we talk with them and find out when they have a dead zone and we'll bring events in but you know it's kind of unfair to say we underutilize it because our hands are tied. Um, we did uh, have an issue with lighting. Um, a pole broke one year and we uh, found uh, city staff helped us uh, finance. We're paying for a quarter million dollars worth of lighting. And we did a photometric plan to make sure that the light bleed was way better than what it ever was mm -hmm. with our old system. Our old system was, well, our new one is one eighth the power consumption and we designed it to fit inside the arena and used to be able to watch, you knew when the drill team was practicing three nights a week because you saw this glow, kind of like the old Larson's lights when they used to twirl around the town, you knew something was going on at the Civic. Now you don't know until you hit the bridge, until you get off on Sundown Bridge that there's the lights are actually on. And I worked with city staff and we showed that we're gonna bring that light in and it's amazing. You sit in the back row of our arena, it's dark, it's light inside the arena. So mm -hmm. um, things can happen to make these have this, this work along the riverfront. And uh, we're very excited. Um, I do have a lot of, uh, real quick, um, I, I love the fact that when you brought up some generic photos of an indoor arena, these people were paying attention. <laughs> Obviously the scale of that arena is way too small. That was probably maybe 2,000, 3,000 people at most, which wouldn't even benefit a concert at our events here. So. Um, um, I've got a lot of conceptual drawings. We've traveled, we've been to a lot of venues. Good. I am very looking forward to showing you and sharing with you those ideas and concepts of an outdoor venue because we don't want to be indoor. An indoor in venue for concerts and maybe even a, con a building in between to house mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, exhibit halls, uh, conventions, whatever. You, I mean, it would be a true multi purpose facility with an outdoor, indoor, and mm -hmm. convention center that everyone could use down there and condense our footprint. So, Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. That concludes public comment. Unless there are any other takers. Okay. okay. Thank you. We have one more thing to do, and I'm going to bring up uh, my associate, uh, Dan Amstead, to make sure everyone is aware of our next steps. A little more technical in nature, but we want to make sure that you have a good understanding of where we are and what's to come in this uh, planning effort. So once we get our uh, machine back up, we'll get underway with the final segment of tonight's meeting. Okay, we're just going to get the screen back up. It is slowly warming up. All right. While it is warming up, and frozen. <laughs> All right. First, um, 
big thanks to the entire coalition. This is a big effort. Really appreciate all of your input and discussions here over now four different meetings. I did want to talk a little bit about now that we're really launching the specific plan process, some of the things that are going to come up and, and, you know, Daniel made the analogy. We're sort of packing the car in the garage. This is kind of the map. We still haven't left the garage yet, but this is the map of sort of where we're heading. So a quick reminder, we talked about this a few meetings ago, but this process will ultimately end with a specific plan document, which is a city of Reading policy document. It will have development regulations, preservation uh, objectives and requirements, as well as design guidelines for new projects, and a lot of technical analysis. Um, but as we mentioned before and discussed a little bit tonight, there's no individual projects that come out of this process. It's more guiding what happens in the future. We've talked a lot about buildings, but the specific plan also covers environmental preservation, access, recreation, all these other things as well. So it's really this uh, overall sort of holistic document. I always make the joke that's kind of an eye chart, but the point is there's a lot of things that are gonna take place over the next year and a half or so. And we are right about here. <laughs> so the end of phase one. Um, and we do have some uh, immediate next steps or additional tasks under this phase uh, after tonight's meeting. As Dale mentioned, we're working with our, our team members, but also local partners to get indigenous listening sessions set up here. Uh, in December and early January and taking that input to council as well as a vision guiding principles document, which is really important. Um, final refinements, the vision guiding principles based on tonight's discussion. Uh, we'll put that into, into a package. And then ultimately, or here in January, we're going to be jumping into phase two, which is really kind of the, the next big piece of this project. So a city council meeting to discuss the vision guiding principles get direction from city council on, again, this overarching framework, but also continue our work on the technical study. So as we talked about in the past, we've started the CEQA process several months ago. We have a draft cultural and bio report. Uh, we're also getting our traffic consultant, infrastructure consultants ramped up as well because we want to create, uh, and we're going to create an existing conditions analysis and summary. And so this is a, a little bit different piece of the process. This is just objective, what's on the ground, what are the rules and requirements by different state agencies, for instance, and buffers, but a very objective policy neutral uh, context type document. And then the, the question came up about additional community engagement opportunities. Once this is pulled together, we're gonna have another round of engagement, workshops, meetings, discussions, all of it public, all of it, an open transparent process but to go through the existing context, identify some additional opportunities. It could be different types of venues, different ways uh, for accessing the riverfront, all the things this group has talked about, um, but really creating sort of this conditions and opportunities framework or a little bit more detail on the process. We then get into phase three, which really is the alternatives part of this. And I think this is a key thing. We started talking about a little bit tonight, but as, you know, on part of our team, the consultant team, we have economists, engineers as well. To implement the guiding principles, there could be different alternatives. We talked about different ways, indoor, outdoor, or hybrid venue, for instance. So we're going to be taking those ideas from the community and creating a series of alternatives, but also doing analysis on them, uh, their fiscal impact, economic impact, their vi long-term viability, but also some environmental considerations as well. Um, different options for achieving uh, the different guiding principles. And this will be an alternative summary, essentially. But here's another round of engagement with the community as well to get feedback and input on these different alternatives. Ultimately, again, meeting with city council to discuss them, but uh, then working towards a preferred alternative, which really becomes sort of the basis of the, the draft specific plan. And we're looking at you know May 2024. These things will take a while, but once we have that preferred alternative, we can do the official EIR notice preparation because we have a project description at that point. Although a lot of uh, the existing settings work will already be done and be informing the process. Ultimately phase four uh, next summer through early 2025, we'll have an actual draft plan. And once there's that, again, through these community processes, a preferred alternative, then we get into more specifics on policies, requirements, heights, setbacks, to implement that preferred alternative. We'll have the full environmental impact report and then another 
uh, round of community engagement around the draft specific plan for review refinement as well. And uh, then going to planning commission for meetings, city council meetings, ultimately public hearings in early 2025 and in the final plan. So a big process ahead, but I did want to emphasize a lot of opportunities for community engagement. I also wanted to mention, and for folks online as well, the, the website is a great resource for adding comments, but you can also sign up for email notifications. So every time we post anything or staff post anything to the website, you'll also get notified that it's available as well. So just another uh, great resource. Okay. I'll pass it to Daniel for our immediate next steps and a little more detail. Okay, so immediately, I'd like to just thank the coalition and all the community speakers here. Let's give everybody a round of applause because this is a really great beginning. And to echo the words of many who spoke tonight, thank you for your efforts here around the coalition, but also community members who frequent our meetings and are uh, ready participants as we move forward. So we do have uh, this ongoing discussion with the indigenous community, uh, but the city council meeting is tentatively scheduled for January 16th. So I know you wanna mark your calendar for that. And then the next steps for all of you is to attend that meeting. Hopefully we'd like to see you there and you may wish to speak in front of the council for that public session. Uh, help us get the word out, continue to be ambassadors to the process and uh, just stay involved because this is only the beginning as we've tried to stress. And we do have the website, you can scan it, you can go on there. And uh, so with that, we're gonna bring this meeting and the coalition process officially to a close right now, but we may need you and we will be likely calling on your involvement as we move forward through the process. So on behalf of the entire MIG team, thank you very much. Thank you, city staff. You are great support for us. It's a wonderful community and we're really privileged and uh, honored to be here working with all of you. Have a great evening. Thank you. <laughs>